Hey guys, so we have a new system, the Vox system. I know you saw the email with Carol, um, but I figured instead of emailing you or posting it on typing it out on an update, it would be easier to do a video. So, here goes. So the Vox system is where our guests wear a receiver and we talk through a transmitter. This is where they're stored. They're going to be in here all the time, so if you um, are one of the first three tour guides, you'll come in, you'll get your box. Each box is a full tour, has all the stuff you need. Um, very important on the top of the box, I tried to make this as simple and user friendly as I could. The receivers are what the guests get. They look like this, there's 25 of them, they have a lanyard. The transmitter is what the guide will wear, see it says guide. Um, they look like this, and it's what you will be wearing as the tour guide. So, each box has it written on the side of the box and on the lid, so if they get separated, you know where they go back to. This is the only one that is channel one, channel one. The others are a little bit more confusing. This one says A2 and channel four. What I mean by that, on the side of each thing, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, there's a channel and an A and a B. We have the capacity to do eight different um, tours at one time. There's channel A, one through four, and then channel B, one through four. So um, instead of writing channel and channel, because I thought that would be confusing, this means that it's going to be A and then channel two. So whenever you pick up your box, you want to check these guys, make sure they're on the right thing, and then, depending on what the lid says, and then on yours, you'll turn it on, and for your transmitter, it'll say channel 4. Okay, so in each box, for this is a full set for a full tour of 25 people, including your backups, there's going to be your, res your receivers, your transmitter, and your earbuds. These are disposable, one-time use. What I've been telling people is when you give them out to your guests, just tell them they can keep them and use them for whatever they want. Um, so you want to make sure you have all of that in here before you go out. So when you wear your transmitter, easiest thing to do, you put it on either side of your head. It does not fit like a headband. It fits around the back like that, or you can flip it over. Um, some people like Nicole, who still talk really loud, have been putting it down here and then just flipping the microphone up. The microphone is pretty sensitive, so that works out fairly well. Let me stick it back the way it's supposed to be now. To make it um, transmit a little bit better, it says it'll go 200 yards. We live in a sanctuary with tons of um, metal, so that doesn't really work. So what we've tried is this, and this seems to work out actually pretty well kind of like you're going to wear a um, tie. Not as complicated if you do it right. So what we've been doing is tying a knot up here. Of course, I can't make the knot. And you can make it as high or as low as you want to, whatever you feel comfortable with. And then you slip this little guy above the knot. And that seems to make it high enough for it to transmit pretty clearly. Of course, you don't want to make it where the antenna is poking you in the nose or anything. And then you can carry it. We also have a vest that you can wear. Um, we have tried the armband, but we had some issues with people not being able to hear that quite as well on the armband. The idea is if it's higher on your body, it's going to transmit in a straight line versus trying to transmit through people's bodies on the tour. It makes sense, trust me. So then um, we only want these on when you're giving the tour and then off when you come back in. The reason is they have AA batteries in them, so we're going to go through a lot of those, but they're supposed to have 40 hours of battery life. So once you've got all of this hooked up, you're ready to, to speak for the tour. Um, now that we're doing the automated tours, the tour guides will also need a Vox system themselves so that they can hear what's going to be going through the um, audio. So you'll have one earbud, you'll have this little guy so you can hear it so you know when to play the next thing. And the other thing you'll have is this handy dandy little cord which will be in each one of the boxes now. So don't lose it uh, when you're putting it back in. And instead of hooking to your headset that you're using, it's going to hook from here into the iPad. Should go there. 
plug it in and then you're going to turn the iPad on. If you haven't used them or you don't have an iPhone, there's an on button right here. It'll, if it's not already on, it'll have the little Apple icon and it'll come on like this. It tells you to slide to unlock, so you're going to do that. And then you're going to click on Zabu's lovely face. And then there are nice big icons. So anybody that needs glasses, you don't have to worry. Um, and you can slide up through. You just take your finger and slide and it'll move through the system and you can pick the different cats. So as you come to each cat, you can pick who it is and hit the hit the button and it should play. It'll pull it up and then you hit this little blue button that says play. The automated tour guide is Big Cat Rescue, so click on the icon to open it. If it opens in 1x, so very small, then click on here on 2x, but this time it opened full screen. Most of what you will be doing on the tour is talking about the cat, but you could also play the rules there. We have a new section called Species that we're adding to. Right now I think we only have lions and tigers and leopards. Um, but we will be adding all of the different species information. So if you want to just talk about a species and not a particular cat, you can play those. And then um, the issues, which would be things like the circus and some of the rescue type work that we've done. But almost everything that you'll be playing will be under cats. When you come to the cat's cage, you find the cat. They're all in here by alphabetical order by their name. So when you get to Cody the Cougar, just press it. And I forgot to turn the volume up here. This big blue button is the play button, so just touch that. Hard. <laughs> is a male western cougar born January 1st, 1996. While this story is played, you can look for the next home. cat coming up. When he arrived, he was filmed for Jack Hanna's Wild Adventures, which aired on Ginger is a female as as serval. Open that, Approximate it's going to start birth, talking about January her, so don't push it until you're ready. Rescued on May 5th, 2013. Ginger... Touching it will stop the audio. This has a... Um, a really heavy duty case on it, so you have to push very hard. We'll probably have to put heavy duty cases on all of them that go out on the tour route just in case they get dropped. So again, when you're through with Ginger, you would go back to the cat list, find the next cat in line. It's Narla. And then touch play to play her story. Narla is a female western cougar, born January 1st, 1997, arrived January... Let's say you wanted to talk about leopard species next. Go home, species, leopard facts, and press play. The leopard. The leopard is the smallest member of the four great cats and most closely resembles its cousin, the jaguar. Le if you wanted to just go back to the cat list again, you go back to home. <laughs> cats. And then pick your cat. Moses. It's a male southern bobcat. Estimated date of birth, April 22nd, 2001. Arrived May 14th, 2001. If the cat wanders off and it's no longer interesting for the people to stand there and listen to the cat, you can guide your tour away from that area while still playing the cat's story and looking for your next story to play. That way there's not a lot of dead air time and they'll still be learning about the cat, but they won't be standing there staring at an empty cage. From a training perspective, there are other things that you can do with this. We have a cat map where you can see all of the cats on the map. 
this just gives you a map of where we are. <laughs> it tells you where Moses is. He's 328 feet away from where I am now. There is a little segment in here about Big Cat Rescue. The issues that we currently have in there are about our kitten room, the Wild Animal Orphanage, the Siberia and Tiger Foundation, and we'll be adding more issues here later on, such as fur farms, circuses, such as that. But most of those issues we try to cover in the individual cat's stories. It was our intention to use this as a training guide also for learning where the cats are, and we're trying to keep it updated. If you were to go to Bongo the Serval, click on Bongo, when you're in his information page here and click Cat Map, it will show you that Bongo lives right there. As you click other areas on the map, you'll notice the name at the top changes and it tells you who lives in those cages. This is not going to be very accurate with the tigers and the lions since they get moved through the vacation rotation enclosure, but most of the other cats will be where they're supposed to be on the chart. The home button will always take you back to home and the choices that you want to choose from. Most of your choices will be in cats. You can have the tour guide on your own phone by going to the iTunes store and downloading the Big Cat Rescue app or in Google Play for Android, look for the Big Cat Rescue app. It currently has the photo of Zabu the White Tiger as the icon. It's pretty easy to find in both stores. And we are now magically in the backyard. So you have your tie with your receiver or your transmitter. So pretend you have a yard full of guests, which we couldn't get on short notice. So all of our guests are going to get these as well as our backups. So you can see mine is on. A little red light tells you that. So when you turn on the gas, there the light comes on too. It's yeah, it's green. I can tell colors. Um, they're on channel 1A, and that's what we're on. Channel 1A, yep. So you're going to hand each guest their thing. Their earbuds come in a little baggie. That way they know they're nice and fresh and haven't been in anybody else's ears. You. So, you can hand you that. Go ahead and stick your earphone in, and what we're going to see is make sure you can hear me before we start out on the tour. So this little guy, we don't want blown out anywhere. So our backups or the tour guides, once our guests get them, you can just say, please hand me your trash, your bag, whatever, because we're going to throw it away. If you want to keep the bag, please put it in your pocket where it won't fall out. If it winds up on a tour path, it can blow into a cat's cage, and then the cat can ingest it, and nobody wants that. Anytime you have to tell them something you don't think they might like, put it on the cat. This is what's best for the cat. Nobody's going to argue with you over that point. It's not you're being mean, you're trying to steal their stuff and throw it away. This is what's best for the cat. And into the trash can we go. Can you hear me? It's kind of freaky how easy they can hear really well. It will pick up everything, including if you're breathing hard, if you're coughing, anything like that. So if you're swallowing water. So it has this handy dandy little mute button right here. And if you poke the mute button in, she can't hear me talking in her ear. She can hear me out loud, but she can't hear me in her ear. And then you turn it back on. So say you swallow a bug or you start coughing, obviously you can move your mic too, but you can hit the mute. Um, so what I've been telling people to do is go ahead and give the rules while you're in the backyard on the mic with the headset in. That way if anybody has an issue, they can go, I, I can't hear you before we even start. That way you're not way out there on the tour and people are like, you know, I can't, I can't hear anything I'm saying. So um, some people may take them out. We've had that as an experience. They're not the most comfortable earphones. Yeah, do what you can. Um, and so if that's the case, then they usually just move right up close to the guy. But with these guys on, you can literally talk like this. So no more yelling, which Carol's very excited about. Um, it'll also be helpful in the summertime for us, uh, especially if you end up doing three tours on a Saturday or Sunday. 
you're dead by the end of the day. Um, you don't have to be as loud. You don't wind up with a headache because you're projecting for an hour and a half, even though you don't realize you're talking that much louder. You really are. Uh, other thing is, you have a voice at the end of the day. That also comes in handy. Um, so I think plus for exhaustion for us, it will be really good as well. Uh, the only issue I've had is sometimes if you're trying to radio while this is on, it won't let you, it doesn't go through. So I just hit mute and then I radioed and people can still hear me on their radios on the sanctuary. Uh, you can still hear, these are not earphones, they're just things that sit on your face. You also won't sound funny to yourself on a microphone if you're afraid of that because you can't hear yourself on a microphone. So it's good to go. So we're going to pretend all of those are out and we're ready to go on our tour and we have a big group of people and we're ready to go. The last thing that should happen is once everybody's counted and ready to go, as your tour guide is finishing up the rules or going to open the gate, um, the backup will take the box, put the lid back on it, and then put it back in the office on that stool where it came from or on that table right in that area. Um, that way these can't just wander off in the backyard. So they're not cheap. And it's not our money, it's the sanctuary's money, so we want to be respectful of the tools and make sure we take care of them properly. The other thing I've been telling our people, our backups, our interns, everything, do you want to keep your little baggie and your earphone and just put it with your big cat stuff? If you've got a space in your car where you're keeping all of your stuff, you bring the big cat, then you can go ahead and reuse the earphone. It's only been in your ear, so that will be good and it'll keep us from having to keep buying more earphones for you guys as well. So you're coming back with your tour, you're coming into the backyard, you're about to take their box systems back from them. Make sure you get them all. Um, the most important thing you're going to do with this little guy is turn it off again. So you hold down the little button that you pushed to begin with. This will show up, it says slide to power off. You just follow the directions slide it and then it will do the little thing and it will turn itself off. It will go all black and you've turned it off. Now you're back from the tour. Very small tour, I only have one person. So as a tour guide, you're going to hold the door anyway. You're the first one through the door. Easy thing to do is go, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you'll hand me your um, receiver back, that'll be great. You want to make sure you turn it on off. And then the easiest thing to do is just hold your arm out as people go by. They'll put it on there. Don't worry, they might be a little wet. We're washing them because, um, you know, people sweat. You can't help it. And then once you have everybody, you're going to walk over here. Your backup will also help. Um, we don't want to just cram things back in the box because the next person that gets the box is going to not like you at all um, if you do that. So making sure they're off. Easiest thing to do is just wind them up like that and stand them up inside. It's easy that way all these don't get all tangled up together. That's a pain in the butt to sort. Um, we just put them all back on from being clean so we can attest to that, including the lady behind the camera, Annette. I can attest to that. <laughs> so this is the easiest thing to do. I know it seems like it takes a little bit longer, but it really doesn't. You can do that out here or back in the office, either one. It does not matter to me. But we do need to make sure that the only time they're on is during the tour. Otherwise, we're just going to go through a ton of batteries. And that's no fun. It's going to cost even more money. Make sure your lid's back on, everything's all set, you got your bag all together, and we're good to go. And then back into the office we go. It's pretty simple. Um, the guests have really been liking it. We have had a little bit of static. Um, sometimes they cut out. They don't really cut out the words. They just make a little clicking noise. Um, and so what you want to do is make sure that your, your tour is together, which you should be doing anyway. But for tour guides, the easiest thing for you guys to do, you're talking in their ears. Just say, hey folks, I need you to stay with me. You're going to be able to hear me even better. We do have some transmission issues sometimes with all this metal. And, you know, the cat's going to come right over. If you wait too long, the cat's going to go away and not see you anymore. So, I mean, you're literally in their ears. So we've been able to have pretty good res uh, uh, success with that. And the guests have really been liking it. Um, we've been getting good reviews on our, our site. And then just asking people as they're in the gift shop, and they really seem to like it. Uh, the other thing we've had really good success with is if two tours wind up 
like a camembert, like we always do. I don't have my tour here yelling at them, and you know Jennifer has her tour over here, and she's yelling at them, and our tour is hearing them, and their tour is hearing me, and said you're going. So this is a camembert, and you can say whatever you want, and they can say whatever they want, and their people can hear them, and my people can hear me, and it seems to be really good. Um, so we're really trying it out during the slow time to perfect our technique and what we're doing with it so that during the fast time, crazy spring break and holiday and all of that, we're set and good to go. Um, like I said, we can do up to eight, of course, if some of you have been here during that time, we do 10 and 12 tours at the same time. So we're still working on it, but so far it's working really good. Um, uh, Carol's very happy to see people with little earbuds walking around. She gets super excited about that. So, um, you guys give us some feedback too and let us know what you think. So far, the interns and the other tour guides who have used it really seem to like it. So, you realize you don't have to yell at people anymore. And that's kind of nice. So, see you around. Wear your earbuds, talking into the microphone, and have a good time.